the scanner back out. One sheet of plywood equals one scanner. Um, a third thing is that it's a fairly unusual design in terms of the way it handles the book, and that's for a very specific reason. So, to give you an idea, you press on this lever to raise the book, and the book comes up to the glass and presses flat against it. And in almost all DIY scanner designs to date, the book remains still and the platen comes down to meet it. But the reason for doing it this way is because if you put a paperback book in here which wants to stay closed, when you pull the platen away, the book will close and you can lose your page. And the design of this scanner is such that this whole top piece can be removed, flipped over, and the bottom of the glass V becomes a roof where you can lay your paperback book and scan at a high rate of speed. So a little more information about this scanner. One of the great things that I'm testing in this design is this bike brake camera trigger. So instead of using um, firmware hacks or solder together things or special triggers, we want to use any camera. And one great way to do that is just to press the button on the camera. So as I'll show later in the video, um, up here I have a little finger that is pulled by this lever and it simply touches the button of the camera to take a picture. That means any camera will work, um, any brand, any type, any firmware, as long as it has a button, we can use it, which I think is important. Now another thing that I've gone and done in this design is worked hard on making things easy on the book and on the operator. So the first thing I wanted to fix was loading a book, because it's the first thing you do when you scan a book. So I'm going to take off these bungee cords on the left and right, and in a, in a commercial scanner, you typically have to kind of get the book into the machine. And you have to raise the platen, lock it in place, and kind of feed the book in. And this is a really difficult thing to do. And on certain machines, this bottom area is blocked. And so as an operator, uh, you can be subjected to substantial strain. And so in this design, I made it such that the cradle just comes out. And right now I have some accessories on this cradle. Um, but the basic idea is that the book drops in here, you adjust left and right to fit the thickness of the spine, and then simply drop it back in the, in the scanner. And right there, um, you're saving the operator a lot of strain. Now, the second thing is, if I try to lift this book right now, it's effectively at the end of a very long lever, and it's a lot of force, it's very hard on the operator's hands. I have wrist injuries, and I don't want to aggravate them doing this a thousand times. So along the sides of the scanner, here and here, I have bungee cords to counterbalance the weight of the book. And since all books are different weights, we need a means of adjustment. Like, this isn't bad, I could do this most of the day. But if the book is heavy, it's possible to simply take one, one bungee cord and double it up for twice the lifting power. So whereas before the book was heavy to lift, now it floats almost neutrally. I'm putting almost no force on this handle. Um, again, to capture the book, in the past we've used special hack firmware, um, different kinds of triggering mechanisms. Some people have tethered their cameras to their computers. Um, I don't like getting a computer involved for a couple reasons. One is that in places where there's no power or disaster situations or environments where you can't plug into the wall, you don't want to be tied to a computer. And the other reason that tethering the camera to the computer is a bad idea is that only some cameras are supported. So, in using a mechanical triggering mechanism, we sort of, we can, not sort of, we can absolutely use every camera that ever had a button. So operation is basically like this. Turn a page, pull up, press the trigger. Turn the page, pull up, press the trigger. And just keep going like this. With each press of the shutter button, you're getting two pages. At a good clip, you can capture about a thousand pages an hour this way. Um, the thousand pages an hour rate is what I like to call the no bathroom breaks rate. If you are like me and you like to check your phone or mess around, you'll get anywhere from a few hundred to eight or nine hundred without much trouble. A thousand pages an hour is well practiced and really moving. Now another thing that we've done on this model um, that's not completely fleshed out, remember this is a beta, it's absolutely not a final product and it needs development from the community, 
um, is the ability to scan paperbacks. Now you might say, well, all book scanners should be able to scan paperbacks, right? But the dirty secret of book scanners is that when the, the platen lifts up, the book here in the cradle wants to close because the binding of a paperback is very tight. And in this model, if the paperback were lifted up against the glass and it weren't open, it would be sort of disastrous. So the design of the scanner is such that there are these two uh, or four uh, clasps all the way around, and the top of it actually comes off, I'm not going to do it, but and can be flipped over so that the bottom point of the two glass plates becomes a roof. And you can take the book and spread it open onto it, onto the platen like this, with the whole thing upside down, and scan paperbacks very quickly, which is something that no other scanner can do. And another thing, although it's not totally finished yet, is that the glass will be held in by two little clamps right here. And that means that you can actually pull the glass out so that there's a gap for a spiral bound notebook, which is one of the things that's extraordinarily difficult to scan. They don't sheet feed well, they don't work in these kind of scanners because it bangs against the bottom of the glass, so on and so forth. So of course, in general, I designed this thing in three parts. So there's sort of the lighting part, which is just resting up here. Depending on your demands for color quality, for fidelity, for cheapness or power efficiency, you could choose LED, halogen, or fluorescent. The basic rule is there's nothing better than halogen or tungsten for color rendition and image quality. The second best is LED, which has a, a bit of a um, bumpy spectrum, but it's totally usable. The worst is fluorescent. I don't ever recommend using fluorescent of any kind, even the so-called photo fluorescents. Um, moving down from that, we have the capture module, so lighting module, capture module, book module. The capture module simply has two cameras. Um, I only have one mounted because I'm videoing with the other. Um, some kind of trigger mechanism, three possible trigger mechanisms. There's a shutter release from the manufacturer, there's a remote control, or there's the mechanical um, bike brake method, which is what I'll be using. And this, this portion of the scanner also contains the glass and becomes the paperback scanner when flipped over. And the bottom part is the book handling module, which accommodates the left-right motion of the book as it is scanned, um, and also helps the book self-center in the glass of the platen. One of the really important things about the scanner, in my mind, is that it's all made very carefully. So, for example, um, all the linear motion is supplied by skateboard bearings. And the reason for that is because skateboard bearings are available worldwide, they cost almost nothing, and they're incredibly durable. And if you're going to send a scanner like this into a place like Haiti, or even into somebody's basement, you want it to be easily repairable and easily understandable. Likewise with the bike parts. This is a bike seat post from a children's bike and a dual bike brake lever from Amazon. If you want to look at the total material cost of this scanner, it's like, say, 30 bucks for the light, 40 bucks for the plywood, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks for skate bearings. It's not a great cost. And I don't know if I sell them what I will sell them for, but it's possible to manufacture this thing very cheaply. And because it's built on computer controlled equipment, it can be sent out to anyone who has that equipment, and there are, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of those computer-controlled cutting machines in the United States. So that's the scanner in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to try and get some close-up shots of things working so you can get an idea of how the mechanics are going. Um, thanks. Well, maybe I'll just take this off the tripod. So I apologize for the lack of production polish on this video, but uh, I really don't have a choice because this was my workshop, um, but I had to move out of here in a, in a hurry as I'm switching jobs. So the lift mechanism is a four bar linkage. Um, you're out here on the end of a lever pulling up and you can see the bungee cord um, counterbalancing the, the book. Um, you can see the book when it comes up will self-center and flatten out beautifully. Um, towards the sides of any thick book, all V-shaped platen scanners go a little bit off-center. Um, and I could show some photographs of that in the forum. That's something that we all need to work on engineering something better, but it's a problem inherent to all of them. Here you can see the uh, shutter mechanism, which is depressed by the bike brake lever. And all, all I do is simply 
press the button on the camera to capture. And so again, any camera will work. The distance from the camera to the glass is such that any uh, micro four thirds or compact camera, or in this case, uh, an APS-C Sony Nex 5, um, should be able to zoom in and, and capture the total area of the page. And at 12 by 9 by 3, it's possible to do easily 300 dpi across the page. Um, if you get into the new 20 megapixel compacts, we could be doing up to 500 or 600. Um, I haven't done the numbers, but, but things look really good. The cradle, as you saw, it's removable. It slides left and right very smoothly. Um, but this is a, a specific limitation of this design, is because this is just free floating and has essentially no friction, the scanner must be on a level table or leveled. If it is unlevel, the book will slide to one side and make centering against the glass of the platen difficult. So one limitation must be centered. Um, over here, I can show you the um, doubled up bungee cord. So again, all the, all the uh, counterbalancing for this mechanism is done with bungee cords. And you can adjust all the way from, to just neutral for the weight of this platform to neutral for the weight of a large book by doubling these up. And it's no more difficult than putting this from here to here. And now this is more difficult to lift. If I double it up, it will be less difficult. In all cases where there are bearings, which are here, 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 um, they're just skateboard bearings embedded in the wood. And wherever you see a bearing like this, there's also a bearing on the other side. So there are two bearings with a 5 16 bolt through them, or an 8 millimeter bolt. I can't remember which I actually chose. Um, but throughout the scanner, the, the design is that way, where essentially one portion has bearings and the other part has the bolt um, threaded into it. All the bolts in this design are straightforward, cheap, easy to find bolts, no funny size fasteners or anything else. I got all mine at Fastenal and I will get all the part numbers online. There are a few, you know, keep, again, keeping in expectations in line, there are a few things that I would change about this scanner. Here's one. Um, when you come down with the bike brake cable, it's possible to rub it against this part of the scanner. So something should be clearanced here. Um, another issue is that right now I don't have the metal clamps that hold the glass designed or I haven't found the right ones, so this glass is just glued in place. Um, another thing is that with the bike brake system, the whole top module can't be taken off and turned over because the, there isn't a mount for this up here. Um, and that's something I need to work on. Another thing is using the LED lighting as it is, um, this is the absolute correct distance from here to the apex of the platen, such that there's no glare, but I probably need to extend this up so that this can rest on a tabletop when this uh, part of the system is rotated upside down. Um, in general, I'm really happy with this scanner. It doesn't weigh very much, it doesn't cost very much, it's extremely high performance, and the the optics are finally correct. So with the platen at 100 degrees, we have one of the narrowest platens available that is still optically correct. From the point of view of the camera, when there's a cover over the scanner, there's no glare from the, from the light or from the, um, or from the facing page, which is the other source of glare. Of course, when you operate the scanner, you either need to operate it in the dark or have a piece of cloth draped over it. Um, that's true of all scanners. They need to be they need to be shielded from sources of glare, like windows or overhead lights, um, which you can see very clearly here. Um, no 